Hey, this is Dave with the Shepherd School, and today we're going to talk about potassium iodide. After the uh, Fukushima plant disaster, a lot of misconceptions and rumors have been floating around the internet. And uh, for a long time, you know, the survivalist type um, have always talked about having, you know, radiation pills in case of a, a nuclear attack. And I want to talk a little bit about some of these misconceptions and what actually potassium iodide does. Now, uh, I guess some of you might know, but uh, in my full-time job, I actually do uh, training for first responders in how to prepare for and uh, uh, prevent uh, nuclear accidents, I guess, first responders, how they can protect themselves, um, and how to mitigate those damages to the public. And so I talk a lot about potassium iodide. As a matter of fact, we issue uh, this, or my state issues this out to, uh, you know, first responders in the event of a nuclear disaster so they can go out. And also they have a bunch stock piled for people who live around nuclear power plants. And I don't want to get into too much of that. But uh, I hear a lot of uh, people talk about this stuff and uh, what it actually does. So let me just tell you some things. Number one, radiation is a chemical property of the material, of the element that's being released. And different elements have both radioactive forms and non-radioactive forms, okay? Now also, your body needs certain chemicals in order to, um, you know, function, right? You need calcium for strong, healthy bones and, you know, vitamin C for a good immune system and, you know, fight against colds and such. Well, one of the things your body needs is iodide for uh, your thyroid to regulate things like growth. Well, we don't get enough of it in our diets, um, and that's why they add it to things like salt. Right? That's why you have iodized salt, so that you can get the iodine your body needs for your thyroid to work. Well, one of the things that's created inside a nuclear reactor in different types of uh, radiological processes, sometimes radioactive iodine is formed. Okay. Well, if you get exposed to radioactive iodide and your body needs iodide inside its thyroid, if, you're, if your thyroid tank is on E um, and your body, you know, absorbs or ingests the radioactive iodide, it says, oh, I need that, grabs it, sucks it up, throws it in your thyroid, and it does uh, damage to you, not from the iodide, but from the energy released as part of it uh, being radioactive. So what happens is, if you take this stuff, potassium iodide pills, before you get exposed to radioactive iodide, then it, it's kind of like a cup. You know, if you have a cup and you go into the uh, to the fast food restaurant and they give you the empty cup and you stick it in the, in the ice machine and it's empty and it needs ice, if you put ice in it, it fills it up. Well, once the ice is, is full, once the cup is full, all that extra ice goes off and goes down the drain and melts and whatever. Well, that's what this stuff does. It fills up your thyroid with the, with the good iodide, so when you get exposed to the radioactive iodine, there's no place for it to stay, so you flush it out of your system. Okay? So this stuff isn't a radiation pill. It doesn't protect you against the different types of radiation. It protects you against uh, uh, element, a chemical, with radioactive properties. Okay, that uh, you may be exposed to if you're inside a, a plume of, of uh, radioactive contamination. Okay, so you need to take this stuff before you get exposed and only if you're getting exposed to one particular radioactive isotope. Now, um, you can buy this stuff on the internet, all sorts of places sell it. Um, really, unless you live on a major corridor where you know material is being shipped around a nuclear power plant, you know, or, you know, you're expecting nuclear war to rain down on you, you probably don't need it, but, you know, if you would feel comfortable buying it, go ahead, but I will tell you, some people are allergic to this stuff, okay, and if you're allergic to iodide, right, big, big letters on here, don't take it. And I don't want to get into, a lot of people say, if you're allergic to this, you're probably allergic to iodine. And since I'm not a doctor, I'm not going to tell you what you may or may not be allergic to. But I will tell you, your doctor can perform a test to see if you're allergic to this stuff. And if you are, you shouldn't take it. 
Also, if you've had your thyroid removed, you know, you don't need to take it. And there's been some um, research that says if you're of, you know, if you're older than 50, right, and you get exposed to radioactive iodine, the amount of time it takes for it to, to uh, uh, actually do you damage, you know, to, to, to potentially cause cancer, you don't have enough time in your lifespan. So uh, there's some guidance that says if you're over, you know, 50 or so, you don't even need to take it because it won't do, do you any good one way or the other. But, you know, uh, I wouldn't want to make that choice. So, like I said, I've got some of this stuff just because, right? But, uh, you know, we only take it, you know, in the event of a radiological emergency where radioactive iodine was released. And uh, uh, we just have some so we wouldn't have to go to the store to fight people to get it. But, uh, really, it only does one particular thing for one particular threat. But uh, if you feel comfortable with it, go ahead and get it. Just realize it is not a radiation pill to protect you against all sorts of scary, nasty stuff. So anyway, I just wanted to talk about that for a second. And, uh, you know, if you want to see more, read more, or whatever, you can always find us online at www.tngun.com. I've got a plan fits my point of view. I'm getting